So this month, if you're listening in this month, I'm going to be raffling off. Uh, so if you're a sub, I'll probably make a whole tweet about it tomorrow. But if you're a month, this month, if you are a sub to 2G Gaming, you will be entered for a chance, obviously automatically for subs, unless this person does not reply. Um, you'll be automatically entered in for a chance to get The Last of Us Part 2 on the day of. So if you're somebody who, you know, is like, oh, shoot, you know, I really want to play... Um, I cannot remember that game that was announced. God. Uh, not Sekiro. I keep thinking it's Sekiro. Um, Ghost of Tsushima, right? If you're one of those people who want to choose between Ghost of Tsushima and Last of Us 2, you're like, shoot, the wallet's pretty tight. You know, I, I kind of want both, or I want to play both, or I want, you know, one or the other, and I have to get the other. Well, don't worry, we got you covered. You know, if you're a sub, you already... You know, get to be part of that giveaway, and yeah, you'll get a chance to get every month. I'm talking like every month, you'll be have a chance. If you're not a sub, and you're totally just following 2D gaming, and you're you know watching the YouTubes and all that stuff, uh, I'm definitely going to be giving away a Switch game every month. I think this month I'm going to be doing the Clubhouse 51. Yeah, Clubhouse 51 games this month. So this week we'll be raffling. I probably at the end of the week, hopefully, or the beginning of next week, we'll be raffling off. A free switch game and that's yeah and that's if you're not you don't have to be sub you just have to like follow us here you know be on the youtube channel and whatnot and you automatically you know there'll be a whole process through gleam don't worry guys so if you're curious about it yeah and that's free but if you're a sub you automatically get like the latest game as a raffle uh shout outs to my friend who i told him i wasn't gonna name him because he's giving me these codes <laughs> um, Three, two, but yeah one, that is my announcement yeah. Cool stuff. I'll talk about it more later as we get into Raven King versus Burst. Oh. It's like they already started too. Nice. So yeah, Raven King versus Burst. Raven King just beat Hbox uh, moments ago. Burst, of course, we saw go down 3 0 versus Tony the Tank, who is waiting in Losers Finals. Yeah, I'm actually really excited to see Burst come back because he kind of had a really, really tough time against Tony Zutek in Winter Side, and that did not bode really well for him. So seeing him come back up against a Raven King is going to be really interesting. Raven King, though, I think that's the one thing that like he he kind of has in this matchup. Inkling has to always be in your zone, so if Raven King can call out Inkling at the right time, he can make it really difficult for Inkling to actually feel uh, comfortable approaching. You know. But the one thing that Inkling kind of does have over a character like Ike is the fact that like it's it's the speed, you know, it's the fact that Ike is still is a swordsman. He's got some really good damage, but he lacks the proper speed to actually be able to do like a lot of the options, you know. And poor frame data can be can go a long way for characters. Um, and Ike doesn't have some of the greatest frame data at all. Still though, he's gonna hit you like a truck. So as soon as he's able to catch a burst, it's gonna be pretty big. Oh, that was good. I feel like he wanted to go for a neutral air or an empty hop neutral air, but unfortunately, in the middle, he got caught. Still keeps up 2 2 stocks apiece. Burst lost that e <laughs> Burst lost ink at the last second, but it didn't matter because he just lost the stock. It's the first time I've seen that Ether cut about a shield. But I mean, that's something that all the Fire Emblem characters have is like a pretty solid out of shield option. And that's like with all of them across the board. I think Roy is the only one where you don't want to go for. Uh, Blazer out of shield because it's not that fast in startup. Uh, but it's a pretty solid option to still have. I think there are better. Roy just has better out of shields options instead of you know up special. Yeah, but of course landing the nair into back air again. See Raven King really trying to apply pressure at the ledge. Going to escape the the ledge with the roll nair not going to land. But there's the up throw into up air not going to kill. Okay, opting for the roller, trying to catch Raven King on his landing, but Nair into up air is the option from Raven King. Oh, very nice. Oh, I feel like he wanted to go and to confirm into another aerial, but it's kind of caught in the middle of the jump, gets grounded. Can he mash out? No, he cannot. Burst is doing a pretty good job, honestly, against Raven King, but like I said, the matchup is pretty tough for a character like Ike. Like, Ike has a few things against Inkling in terms of spacing, but like, the fact that Inkling is so fast has a pretty solid projectile in terms of splat bomb. It makes it difficult for Ike at times, but like once he gets that aerial in, like it's big damage for Inkling. 
Man, Spy Bomb is going to be like a great tool for, for spacing and then for setting up traps at the ledge. But if, as long as Raven King's recovering high, he actually shouldn't. Uh, Spy Bomb shouldn't be a threat. Nah. And the best the best way I can tell any advice to anybody is whenever you're fighting a Fire Emblem character or a sword character in general, just picture their sword swings as a bubble. And once you picture that bubble, you have to make sure you're constantly around that bubble or away from, you know, just trying to space out that bubble so you know when to go in. But unfortunately, they have burst will lose game one. Raven King here kicking it 1-0. Burst King, or Raven King, um, taking game one. This is still best of five, so Burst does have time to adjust. I mean, I mean, we saw him start Inkling. Maybe, maybe the Yoshi picks coming out. Inkling wasn't too bad, to be honest. Yeah, it honestly, wasn't. Like I said, like it's the, it's the speed. It's like it's it's <laughs> it's the fact that like Inkling can just move in and out of Ike's bubble of like zoning, so to speak. And that causes Ike a lot of problems. I think the one thing that Burst does really well is honestly just utilizing that speed, but I feel like he needs to change it up with approaches sometimes. Like things like back air and combo potential. I haven't seen too much of it, but you know, we still have a few more games in here for Burst. One That's more true. game. Potentially one more game. Well, no, it's, it's you gotta go 3-0, right? Yeah. I mean, he could lose this one. We don't know. Oh. Because this is loser's quarters, unless Poor Chief put the title wrong. Um, no, this is loser's quarters, but okay. yep, still best of five. <clears throat> Let's see what's going on in their chat. So you're saying that your your sub tournament's gonna be at the end of the month? Yes. I mean I'm trying to do it. So yeah, if you're if you're sub to 2G gaming, I'm gonna try to like I have to obviously adjust it because we have sagas like every the days change, so I'll, I'll have to adjust to it. Um, but yeah, for this for the, it's scheduled for this month at the end of the month, the last Sunday of the month. I think it's June 28th. So when I enter and I win, what do I get? 60 bucks. The split is $100 pot, $60 first place, $30 a second, and then first place. And third place gets $10. So if you enter and you win, Z Fly, $60, you know. Interesting. You get third, you know. 10, 10 bucks is still pretty solid, man. Right? Get yourself a. It's pretty fancy. I don't know, some, some couple good items from McDonald's. Sweet. Oh, actually, no, you can actually get yourself an In-N-Out meal. That's pretty good if you ask me. 60 bucks? No, for $10. Oh. That's I don't, I don't want to get $10. You want the $60 prize. All right, he's got to get first place. Okay, it's so jumping into game two. Uh, sticking with the England pick, uh, Burst having a much better start here in game one, or rather than game one. Oh yeah, that was good. That was really good. I think as soon as I said like I haven't seen Burst use backer that much, <laughs> that's the first thing I see take the stock. But unfortunately for Burst, like you said, getting caught in that range of the Fire Emblem characters hurts a lot. Yeah. He Raven King even like pulled back the snap ledge, so as soon as first like got caught up in the mix, it, my stock was gone. Yeah. 
I like the fact that Burst was like looking for ways to approach him with back air. I think that's what he needed to do a little bit more. It's just find different ways to approach, especially back air. It's such a nice disjoint. Really fast frame three. Like it, you you have to really abuse that. And especially the way that it leaves Inkling's hurt box a little bit away from Inkling is really good. Oh, the dash attack at the ledge. Ooh, so close. Yeah, and the roller is in it. Oh no. I feel like he held back a little bit, trying to avoid getting hit by Nair, and that's kind of what cost Burst the, the stock. Yeah, yeah it's a little too much pressure. Mistakes. Can't be making those mistakes at, at this point in bracket. And, I mean, Burst started off really strong. Like, he was the first stock, you know, he drew first blood. Then Raven King just kind of brought things back down throw to forward air. Nice. Once again, corner carry, good damage. Puts it at the ledge. Burst a little bit strikes back with the up throw here. True, but that falling up air is gonna catch Burst and you know just continues to wreck up the damage, keeping Burst above Raven King. That's where Raven King wants him to be. So he yeah. can try and strike with these up airs. Another landing there in the up air, that should be the game. Ooh! Close. Oh, nah, he's looking for it. And, and it's funny too, because this matchup for Ike would normally go. Yeah, that got him. Yeah, I still got it. Normally, this matchup for Ike would go, I'm trapped in here with you, especially against Inkling. But the way that Raven King was playing, he goes, no, you're trapped in here with me. So Raven King had the entire, had control of most of the pace of the match here, even in even with the fact that Burst took the first blood. Yeah, Ike may just be too much for Burst to overcome, especially with all that raw power and the huge sword. Ready? What's the name of the weapon? Wait, it's only best of, best of three, right? No, it's best of five! Loser's quarters, really? Yes! All of top eight! Um, I, I was so lost. Okay, it's called Ragnar, okay. Two, one, go. Yeah, Ragnar. That's actually the only Fire Emblem game I have not played. Wow, that was like a good one to play, too. I know, everyone tells me. Everyone tells me. This is one of the only Fire Emblem games to actually have like a direct sequel for aside from Shadow Dragon. That is sequel. Yeah, I think it was called. Yeah, Mystery of the Emblem, I think. No, no. I'm waiting for uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses Two. Oh my god. <laughs> I actually forgot about the, the DLC. Alright, stalling out at the side. Make sure Burst is able to make it back to the ledge. I saw Raven King like hanging out the ledge. Uh, looked like he was trying to set up for, for a dare or something to end Burst. Looks like Lapman53 got you. He said Fire Emblem 4 houses instead of 3 houses. There's an extra house. That's a DLC. I'm waiting for Fire Emblem 3 Houses 2. <laughs> oh yeah, the sequel to Shadow Dragon is uh, the Blade of Light. I, I, I remember, it was only it was a Japanese exclusive. We never got it. Wow. Wish I got to play all the Japanese games. Oh, uh, well. I shamefully must admit I have emulated a few because they never came here. Oh no, but that's that splat bomb will make sure Ike never gets back on the stage. That's true. That was really smart for Burst to get hit by the quick draw. You know, it forced Raven King to recover low because we keep seeing Raven King recovering high, so that splat bomb wasn't really playing a big role, as big of a role as it should be playing. I can't believe remember when this character, when this game came out, we all thought Ike was like top five best character in the game because MKLAO was like near confirming everybody. Yeah! It's like, <laughs> understandable. And then MKLAO this was like. Was destroying people! Yeah, and then MKLAO was like, yeah, once I let go of the character, he's gonna drop off. And that exa exactly happened. <laughs> I mean, there was, a, there was actually a lot of characters like that, though, just because it was the start of the game. Not necessarily yeah. because people didn't know how to, quote, fight against it yet. Um, it was just people weren't good at the game yet. Yeah. Like, look at Pichu. Like, yeah, he got nerfed, but even even Ford was saying that after the first Genesis, Pichu was going to fall off.
Yeah, and he was right. I mean, he, I think him dropping the character was like the big, the biggest thing, and the nerf. Those two things, remember, I remember was like the nail in the coffin for Peachy to drop off. Avoid dropping the character, and then the, no the nerf. Remember when Doc was considered top twenty? I kind of remember that. It's because like he had some combos that people were down like, throw wow. a B. Yep. Down throw a B. The chin people, check. People were just like, "Wow, Doc has combos." Top twenty character. <laughs> I'm like, what? It's like you only you only need one kill confirmed to be top twenty, apparently. Uh, but lo first, lo lo low key in four, that's kind of how it worked. <laughs> first, able to take game three. Moving on to game four. Let's see, let's see. I definitely do believe in four the meta was if your if your character has a down throw kill option or a down throw kill confirm, your character was a high tier or top tier. Indefinitely. If your character did not have that, you struggled so much. Well Sheik didn't have it for the second half of the game. Yeah, for the second half. But remember, like for the first half, like dude, everybody kinda said like Sheik and Diddy were the two best characters in the game. Yeah. Or DLC. Oh yeah, I mean not even that, like oh, oh god. Oh god. Great pickup. Alright, that was gross. Um, <laughs> I came back to say that. That was disgusting. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm always I'm always surprised whenever an S Smash has like a backside hitbox. Especially with yeah. like like the way Ganon and Ike do. Dude. It's so crazy because in the in ultimate that's way more prevalent. In, in 4, I didn't. I don't remember seeing it that much, but in Ultimate, it's way more out there. Like, Peach's Fair has it too, I think? Yeah, yeah, Peach's Fair, or Ganondorf of Smash. Alright, uh, Raven King's popping off. I'm waiting right, for I got that. that. Oh. oh, yeah, as soon as you got the Nair. If I got that S Smash too, I'd be feeling myself popping off. Dude, it was a zero to death too. <laughs> That's like, even worse. Yeah, you see how he swings? That sword is a heavy looking sword, I'm telling you. It's pretty thick. Dude, this is Young Ike, Earth. too. It's yeah, it's Young Ike. First game Ike, not man mode Ike, where he swings the sword with one hand. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. I prefer this design of Ike. Yeah, I like the Young Ike. Ike. This one was the one from the GameCube, Better. right? Yes. Yeah, and it's but the, the least cool one. Right? What are you talking about? No, I thought the other one was on the Wii. I think it is on the Wii. Yeah, sure. okay, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm positive. Yeah, yeah, Radiant Dawn, I think. Mm. It's on the Wii. It's when Pike's a grown-ass man and all the kids from the first game are grown up. And uh, the thief still sucks. So, I think it was, it was a thief, right? Oh. Mm. So yeah. and Volk. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Oh, that was. Oh, Wait, all right. Cannons up smash would have killed. Yeah, I can't, of course, yeah, cannons up yeah, smash would have killed. But why though? He's a grown ass oh. man. That's why. He's a dark lord. I'm a little confused why I up smash didn't kill, but it's okay. Yeah, also, the next until oh, it's also because Town and Cities is um is higher. That's why. That's, that's the one thing that helped out burst. If it were any other stage, they definitely would have played minute. out differently. Wait Three minute. words. Grown ass throwing. man. Maybe he's not throwing nah, nah, nah. He's just one up air away. He's one up air, one up tilt. Forward tilt, he's, back he's air, bro. He's swinging. He, just, he literally has to hit him one time. Okay, that's not the hardest. That's the hardest. Bro. Oh boy. Ooh. That's the hardest part though. Burst is popping up. Dude. Burst is popping <laughs> up. That's what I'm saying, like, he's throwing. He that's is throwing right now. No, well, that's the problem, too, is he has oh, to swing. No, there no, you no. go. Yeah, you got him. You got him. You got him. Is he has to swing to get the kill, and because of that, like, that gives Burst enough time. Because remember, Ike's starting.